Welcome back to Chasing, where we dig into the stories that stay with us and demand answers. Today, we're focusing on a case that has rocked a small town in South Carolina, a young woman's disappearance, wrapped in betrayal and suspicion. This is the story of Jessica Barnes, her life, and the events that led to a tragedy no one saw coming. Jessica Barnes, a 20-year-old from Pendleton, South Carolina, who vanished in August 2024. Her story is not only one of a disappearance, but also one filled with deception, manipulation, and a tangled web of relationships that ultimately led to her tragic end. It all began on August 1st, 2024, the last day anyone saw Jessica Barnes alive. A bright, 20-year-old woman, Jessica was living in a small house on Laurel Drive in Pendleton, South Carolina, with her husband, Brandon Barnes, and two other women, Victoria Tippett and Kendall Mims. What initially seemed like a typical arrangement would soon reveal darker undertones. Jessica's family, particularly her mother, Cecilia Varvara, grew concerned as weeks passed without hearing from her. By September 10th, after weeks of silence, Cecilia reported Jessica missing. Desperate for answers, she confronted Brandon directly. But rather than receiving clarity, she was met with even more confusion. On September 16th, Brandon posted an ultrasound photo of himself kissing Jessica a moment that should have symbolized love, but instead raised Cecilia's suspicions. Beneath this post, Cecilia left a message, both heart-wrenching and pointed. Brandon, I have a few questions to ask you. Since you claim to love Jessica, my daughter, where and when did you see her last? Please be honest. Why did you bring another girl into your house when you already had two women there? Why did you marry Jessica when you had another girl expecting a baby? Why did you tell Jessica that girl was your sister? And lastly, why didn't you call me, her mom, or the police when she went missing? What kind of husband are you? Her words echoed the growing desperation of a mother who knew something was terribly wrong. The community of Pendleton, with its small population of just 3,700, began to rally around Jessica's family, sharing in their concern as the investigation began to unravel shocking details. On September 20th, law enforcement conducted a thorough search of the home Jessica had shared with Brandon and the two other women. As investigators dug deeper, it became clear that Jessica's life had been filled with hidden complexities. She wasn't just living with her husband. She was caught in a toxic web of relationships. Brandon, it turned out, had been unfaithful. His affair with Victoria Tippett, one of their roommates, was eventually exposed, and it wasn't the first time Brandon had betrayed Jessica. As the days passed, Brandon and Victoria took to social media to tell their side of the story, attempting, in their words, to share the truth. Please pause to read. Victoria's post was a shocking admission. She wrote, Jess bailed because she found out that Brandon cheated on her with me. I'm supposed to be her best friend, and I did something very wrong, hurtful, and ungodly. Yes, Brandon has cheated on Jess a few times, but she always forgives him. So, we didn't expect her to just up and leave the way that she did. We thought she needed space. Jess is my best friend, and we did everything together. I know what I did hurt her deeply, and I wish I could take it back. In her post, Victoria shared that despite Jessica's outward strength, she had been deeply struggling since the loss of her and Brandon's child, a son who was stillborn. She confessed that Jessica had been depressed, often speaking of her hopes to see her son again, which added another layer of complexity to her disappearance. Brandon, too, posted a confession, filled with regret and guilt over his actions. I messed up because I thought Jess would always forgive me no matter what I did. I cheated on her four different times, including with her best friend, Victoria. 
I've been hiding this from her family and lying to detectives. I didn't report her missing right away because I believed she'd come back like she always had before. I know y'all think I know where she is, but I don't. I was ashamed to admit I cheated, and I didn't want the whole town to know I'm the guy who messed up his marriage. As Jessica's family and friends grappled with the revelations, another voice emerged from Brandon's past. His ex-girlfriend, Catherine Gom, came forward with her own harrowing story of their relationship. Catherine had two children with Brandon before leaving him in 2022. She shared with investigators that she, too, had been subjected to control, manipulation, and even violence during her relationship with Brandon. Her testimony was chilling and hauntingly similar to what Jessica had likely endured. Catherine described how Brandon isolated her from family and controlled her movements, revealing a dark pattern of behavior that extended beyond his relationship with Jessica. Meanwhile, another former girlfriend of Brandon, Julia, added yet another twist to the story. She publicly commented on social media, revealing that Kendall Mims, another roommate, has a child with Brandon. According to her post, Kendall has a child by Brandon. Jessica was the wife, but Victoria was having the affair with him. There was so much going on in that house that most of us couldn't keep up. I don't know why anyone stayed with him after everything he did. With each new revelation, the once simple case of a missing woman became a tangled web of lies, infidelity, and dark secrets. Despite the disturbing nature of these revelations, there was still no sign of Jessica. The investigation intensified as law enforcement focused on searching not just the home, but also the surrounding wooded area where Jessica's car had been found. The case had become a full-blown mystery that gripped the entire community. But then, on October 1st, the search came to a devastating conclusion. Human remains were discovered in a remote area of Pickens County, and dental records confirmed the worst. Jessica Barnes had been found. The cause of death was asphyxiation by strangulation, and her death was officially ruled a homicide. Here is a press conference held regarding the findings. But if, at the end of this day, uh, we always want to remember that Jessica should be remembered past anything else. Um, the police department, as well as SLED, has worked hard and tirelessly to try to bring those to justice that have harmed Jessica. But again, going forward, we always want to remember that she is most important. And her mother has been a constant rock. Um, she has assisted me um, with as much information she's been able to provide and as much information and insight into Jessica's life and how important and what a vibrant young lady she was. And I want everybody to understand that she will be missed and she was an important member of the Pendleton community, and uh, we enjoyed the, what I've learned about her. I, I wish I would have had more time to meet her and speak to her, and you know we want to go forward from this. Uh, currently, I'm going to read our update. Uh, on September the 10th of this year, Miss Cecilia, Jessica Barnes' mother, reported her missing to the Pendleton Police Department. Officers began investigating the facts and circumstances surrounding her disappearance. On September 16th, I contacted the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division for assistance in locating Jessica. Agents for SLED began to provide assistance to Pendleton officers on September 17th. They were here the next day. Details surrounding the disappearance were vague and material and personnel from SLED were required and needed for this continued investigation. Pendleton officers and agents from SLED, as well as assistance from the Clemson University Police Department and Pickens County Sheriff's Office, were able to locate a potential site in the Twin Lakes area of Pickens County along Lake Hartwell. During this search, remains were found and later identified as human. SLED agents were able to collect forensic samples, and the SLED laboratory continues to process these samples at this time. The Pickens County coroner was called to assist and provide recovery 
assistance and autopsy services in conjunction with the Anderson County Coroner's Office. Also, a forensic anthropologist from Prince Clemson University helped identify the remains as human. The husband of the missing girl, Brandon Barnes, as well as the two roommates, Kendall Mims and Victoria Trippett, were then interviewed at this time. On October 1st, Pendleton officers and the Pickens County Coroner were notified by a forensic odontologist that the remains were identified as Jessica Barnes. A forensic odontologist is someone that studies bones, specifically teeth, jaw structure, things like that. Officers from the Pendleton Police Department and agents from SLED brought Brandon Barnes and the two roommates, Kendall Mims and Victoria Trippett, to the Clemson Police Department to conduct interviews. After those interviews were conducted around 12 a.m. this morning, all three of those individuals were then arrested and charged by the Pendleton Police Department. The following charges were made this morning. Brandon Barnes for murder, Kendall Mims, accessory after the fact, obstruction of justice, and misprision of a felony, as well as Victoria Tippett for accessory after the fact, obstruction of justice, and misprision of a felony. All the agents and officers that worked tire tirelessly and diligently on this, I would like to thank these agencies, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, the Clemson Police Department, Clemson University Police Department, Pickens County Coroner's Office, the Pickens County Sheriff's Office, as well as the Anderson County Coroner's Office. This case does remain active and the investigations continue as we gather more evidence. We hope that as we do this and as this information gets out, I call for any members of the public to, if they have anything or to have any kind of knowledge of the actions of the suspects or their whereabouts, that they would report them to the police department. They can come here to town hall, they can speak to any of my officers, they can call SLED and speak to any of their agents, and we will do our best to follow up and gather more information. Prosecution will continue, and we expect and hope that the 10th Circuit solicitors will prosecute everything to the fullest extent of the law. We owe that to Jessica, and we owe that to her memory. Everything that I know about her again, she was a fighter and she stood strong. She believed in what she believed in and we look forward to honoring her memory. We have to do what we have to do. There are some questions I hope to be able to answer, but I hope that everyone does understand that it is an ongoing investigation and that ourselves and SLED want to make sure that we preserve the investigation in order to comply fully with the law and with the solicitor's office so that prosecution does take place. Before I take any messages or any questions, I will turn it over to Cecilia. I believe she has some statement to speak about her daughter. Good morning, it's okay. Uh, hey, uh, thank you all for coming and for being here with me and for all the prayers and support. And the next thing you just know is full of life. You should believe in Jesus and God. Uh, you should love God with all your heart. And now she's with Jesus. And we all sad, but when I wish you better over there than here. She's not in her visit anymore. And she's in heaven with Jesus. And I thank God and everybody who helped her find it. And I just want to thank everybody who prays for us and for the family and for the siblings. And uh, we're going to continue to. I'm going to continue to be a voice for Jessica and just spread like an awareness for, for her and for the horrible thing that happened to her. And I know that God is in control, that God is with her, that God is with us. 
Do you anticipate additional charges in Pickens County or? I believe that SLED is working on um, continued investigation inside Pickens County. Okay. And SLED would be the best to answer about Pickens County. Because Pendleton, we ended our jurisdiction and within Anderson County. Got it. Yes. What detention center is he housed in? Or are they housed in? They are currently housed at the Anderson County Detention Center. They should. Their warrants have been served on them, and they should have a bond hearing at 4 p.m. today. 4 p.m. is the scheduled bond time in the afternoon for the Anderson County uh, Sheriff's Office. Also, do you have a picture of the mugshot? I know their site is down right now. Uh, I do not. They are having critical infrastructure issues with some of their electronics, CAD and dispatch and things like that, and their, their software program that works that does not. So I currently do not have one. And also, the Anderson County Coroner's Office sent out a release earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 
when did they get involved? I know since this was she was found in Pickens County. Yes. When did Anderson County Coroner's Office actually get involved well, with the case? They got involved when Pickens County Coroner decided to move the remains to Anderson County for a full autopsy. So Greg Shore and his team, um, along with me, was able to conduct that at Anderson at Anmed. And also, was she killed in Anderson County or killed in Pickens County? She was killed here in Anderson, inside the city limits of Pendleton. Um, so it's your understanding for the remains were moved to Twin The remains were located at Twin Lakes, and you know we're continuing to look into it and conduct some more investigation to how they got there. <laughs> as long as we can for, for whatever is needed with her. 
Um, we, here, we plan to support her and do what we can to, to provide information, to provide justice for, for her daughter, Jessica. And one last, if there's anything else. Um, oh, yes, I apologize. I believe Troy had something to say. I'll, I'll turn it over to him real quick. The family has prepared a statement. We're deeply saddened to share that Jessica is no longer with us. In her 20 years, she lit up every room she entered. Jessica had ambition, she had dreams, and her soul was a constant witness to others through her faith. We are profoundly thankful for the dedication of all agencies involved in this case, especially the tireless work of Chief Robert Crosby of the Pendleton Police Department, who devoted himself to finding the answers that we have shared here today. With heavy hearts, we humbly return Jessica into the hands of Jesus, where we know that she is now safe from her abuser. Her spirit is renewed, and she is enveloped in the love she so long she so longed for so deeply while she was with us here on this earth. We hope this serves as a message to domestic violence victims everywhere. Please reach out for help. Jessica was strong, but piece by piece, her strength was stripped away. We kindly ask for continued privacy in the coming days as we fully commit ourselves to being Jessica's voice, and we will seek justice for her as her own voice has been diminished. We ask that any media inquiries for the family be sent to press at bluntforcemedia.com. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Um, and last thing, I tend to speak a lot, unfortunately. Um, last thing, I do want to, all the agents are involved, but I do want to give all the credit to my police officers. Uh, my police officers work primarily patrol. They do a great job for this town. They protect the residents, they protect the citizens, they protect the visitors as diligently as they can. But three of them stood out. That is Officer Steve Westcott, Officer Caleb Bishop, and Officer Gabriel Biddlecombe. And they have worked tirelessly interacting with SLED as I have tried to step back and let them work. And they've done an outstanding job. And if it wasn't for their efforts, in all the hard work and long hours that they put in, we would not be standing here today. Thank you for everyone for their time, and feel free to reach out to me. Everybody has, and everybody here has my contact information, and I can answer questions moving forward after today. Thank you all. Thank you, Chief. The grief that had been simmering beneath the surface for weeks erupted as the news spread. Jessica's family was devastated. Pendleton, the small town that had rallied together in search of answers, was now mourning a daughter lost far too soon. With Jessica's remains found, law enforcement swiftly moved to arrest Brandon Barnes, charging him with her murder. But the story didn't end there. Both Victoria Tippett and Kendall Mims, the two women who had shared the home with Brandon and Jessica, were also arrested. They face charges as accessories after the fact, accused of helping to cover up the crime and assisted after the fact. Investigators quested the three for over 10 hours and each confessed to their roles in the crime. The tragic web of betrayal, infidelity, and manipulation had ultimately unraveled, leaving behind broken lives and shattered hearts. Jessica Barnes's story is a heartbreaking reminder of how darkness can sometimes fester behind closed doors, even in relationships that seem, from the outside, to be filled with love. As the investigation continues, the Pendleton community and Jessica's family face a long road of healing and justice. We may never fully understand the depth of pain Jessica experienced in her final days, but we can learn from her story. The hidden struggles, the betrayals, the cries for help, they're all signs that too often go unnoticed until it's too late. Thank you for listening to this episode of Chasing. As we continue to follow the developments in Jessica's case, 
we hope her story serves as a reminder to check in on the people around us, to ask questions when something feels wrong, and to never stop searching for the truth. If you found today's episode compelling, please consider subscribing. Until next time, hold your loved ones close. And remember, everyone has a story. Stay safe, everyone.